Homestead Heart and today we are making persimmon jam. Y'all saw all of those persimmons that we picked in the freezing cold just a day or two ago. So now we are getting ready to get started with making our persimmon jam. Let me tell you what you're going to need. All right y'all so making persimmon jam what are you going to need okay it's a real simple recipe all right you're gonna need five pounds between five five and a half pounds of persimmons all right now i prefer if you're gonna make jam you want your persimmons to be a little on the softer side okay you want them to be a little on the soft side if you harvest your persimmons or you purchase your persimmons and they are really, really hard, just sit them on the counter or on the cabinet or, or whatever for just a few days and give them a chance to start to soften up. We need these to be ripe, okay? We don't want them hard. We want them to be ripe. Now, if you're impatient and you want to do it when they're hard, fine. <laughs> Chop them up, dice them up really, 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 really fine, okay? But if you wait till they're nice and soft, it'll make for a better jam. Not to mention, it'll be a lot sweeter too. They taste so good when they are ripe. Now, the next thing you're gonna need is some sugar. <sighs> and that sugar. You're gonna need four cups of sugar, okay? Four cups of sugar. You're gonna need a fourth of a cup of lemon juice. Can you use fresh lemon? Uh-uh. Lemon juice in that bottle right there. See that? That's what you need. <laughs> All right. Now, lastly, you're gonna need an apple. Now this is a small apple. I, I'm going to say get yourself a medium to large size apple. So since my apple is small, I'm, I'm going to use maybe an apple and a half, you know, but you're going to need an apple. Does it matter what kind? It's your choice. You can get Red Delicious, Golden Delicious, and um, Granny Smith. It's up to you. I like the Granny Smith. They just taste so much better to me when you're cooking. I love them. So I got the Granny Smith apple, but you can get whatever apple you can find, okay? So I think that's everything. The reason for the apple, apples have natural pectin, okay? If you don't want to get apple and you want to use your pectin, you're going to need one box of pectin. Now, pectin for me is like gold. So I'm not really using my pectin if I don't have to. If I can use apples, <laughs> I'm going to use apples, okay? But if you don't have apples and what you got is pectin, then get yourself a box of pectin. Now, let me be clear on this recipe. This is five to five and a half pounds of persimmons, four cups of sugar, a fourth of a cup of lemon juice, and a medium to large size apple or one box of pectin. You don't need them both. Okay. For me, I am going to be doubling my recipe. So you're going to see me with a whole lot more than five pounds of apples. Okay. I'm doubling my recipe. So before you post in the comments, you're using a lot of persimmons. I thought you said five pounds. It is, but I'm doubling my recipe. Okay. So let's get started. All right, y'all, so before I start, start getting my persimmons prepped and ready, what you're going to want to do is get your jars ready. Make sure you wash them with hot soapy water, rinse them well, 
And then, because we are water bath canning, you need to sterilize your jars, all right? I choose to put mine in a 230 degree oven for 15 minutes. If you want, you could just put them down inside of the water bath canner and you can let them sterilize that way for 15, 20 minutes, okay? Make sure that water is super, super hot, okay? Because we are sterilizing, all right? So now I'm going to go ahead and get started with getting my persimmons ready. All right, you all. So what I have here are my persimmons. I have a pot to put them in. The flesh or the pulp of the persimmon is going in this pot. On the floor right here, I have a five-gallon bucket that I'm using to put the skins and the seeds in and that's just going to go to compost or to the chickens who knows i also have me a knife here and like i said you want your persimmons to be as soft as possible and so i'm just going to start at the bottom of this and i'm going to get all my persimmons peeled i'm going to get all the skin off of all of the persimmons i don't know why but i i like to start at the bottom of these persimmons okay it's just me. <laughs> I prefer to start at the bottom. Now, if that skin is soft, literally you can pull it right off, okay? Which on one side of my persimmon is really soft. On the other side, I'm going to go ahead and peel it off. But this part is just peeling right on off. See there? Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. What you're going to be looking for is those little seeds. Now those seeds have a way of hiding inside the persimmon like right here. <laughs> Oops. Slippery. See that? That's your seed right there. So you want to make sure you get the seeds out of the persimmon. Okay, if you don't get them all when you are um, peeling them, that's okay. That's okay. When you get them in that pot, they will show themselves. <laughs> okay. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish getting all of these peeled up. And as you can see, the skin just comes right off. If you want, you can squeeze it out, but I think, in my opinion, I lose just too much of the persimmon when I try to, see all of that? When I try to squeeze it out, it's so much of the persimmon remains on the skin that I don't like doing it that way, okay? I don't like doing it that way. I prefer doing it this way. And like I said, I don't see the seeds right now, but it, it they will show themselves. This one is super soft. The flesh is literally coming out of the persimmon. So yeah, this one, I can just literally rake that right on out of there and move the skin out of the way. All right, y'all, I'm down to the last two. The last two. Yes. One of the things I wanted to mention to you is that if you have harvested your persimmons fresh and you've picked them up, you know, maybe somebody has a persimmon tree or whatnot and you have gone over to um, get their persimmons or you picked them up off the ground even, you know, what you want to do is give them a quick little whiff, okay? Make sure they're okay, all right? If they don't smell so good, don't use those in your persimmon jam. If you if it's questionable, don't use it in your persimmon jam. I guess that's why it's good to get a few extra just in case, especially if you're harvesting them fresh, right? The last thing you want to do <laughs> is put something in your jam that smell like fermented socks, okay? So make sure that they smell good if they are really soft and they've been sitting on the ground. Make sure they smell okay. 
<laughs> no fermented socks. Seriously. All right, so I have my persimmons in the pot. That's what they look like. I have my water bath canner here on the stove and I just turned the fire on underneath it so we can go ahead and get this heating up, okay? So now what I'm gonna do before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and add my apples to my jam. Now, because I'm doing double batches, like I said, I've already done, oh, by the way, you see how small these apples, how small I chopped them up? See that? Real small, okay? We don't want big chunks because those will not break down in this, okay? So because this is a double batch, you would use two apples if you do a double batch, okay? I'm gonna stir that around. And I'm gonna go ahead and add Okay, I'm gonna go, I needed some more lemon juice. Now, this is a double batch, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a fourth of a cup. Look at there, one fourth of a cup exactly. Double batch, so I'm gonna do that twice. of my lemon juice. I'm going to give that a stir. Got to bring that acidity up. All right. Now, I don't have my heat on this yet, okay? What I'm going to do is go ahead and use my little emulsion blender and I need to go ahead and break this down. If you want to puree it in a food processor or blender, you can do that. I'm not going to have mine completely pureed. We're going to have very, very small chunks of persimmon in our jam, okay? If you don't get them all, well, looky, looky. There we go. Gonna keep going. Those little small chunks of persimmon. It's going to be so good. Get all of that out of here. All right, y'all. This is a wonderful consistency. Let me show you. Look at that. See that? Pretty good consistency. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do next is add our sugar. Remember, it's four cups of sugar to five to five and a half pounds of persimmons. So here's my first four cups right here. All right, this is five. Now I got to measure out the rest. Six, and I'm using mar uh, marina sugar. That's seven. All right. Now we have eight cups of sugar. I'm going to go ahead now and give this a stir. Make 
sure we give that a good stir. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this heat on high. And we gotta let this come to a boil. All right, so you all can see this is beginning to foam up. So I'm gonna give it a stir. Now, once you start seeing this foam, this is the time that you don't want to walk away from it. You want to stay right here with it, okay? Because it will stick, and you sure don't want to put that lid back on there because <laughs> it'll be all over your stove. Ask me how I know. So I'm going to stay right here, and I'm going to stir this. Now, some people put a pat of butter in their jam at this point to kind of help break up the foam. But I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to show you why here in a few minutes. I'm just going to let it go ahead and cook. Remember, we got to bring this to a boil. I'm going to start to use my lid as like a shield because I don't want this stuff to pop in my face. So now, this is beginning to bubble and boil, okay? No matter what I do when I stir it, it don't stop foaming and it don't stop bubbling and boiling. So now I'm going to set me a timer, but before I reach back there, I'm going to turn the fire off for a second because I don't want this stuff to pop in my face. I'm going to reach back in and set me a, woo, set me a timer for five minutes. Crank this back up. And now I have to stand here and stir this for five minutes. Grab my shield. I'm gonna bring you closer and let you see the amount of foam. It's not there anymore. But we gotta keep stirring. Look at that. No foam. And remember, this is non-stop stirring for five full minutes, okay? You make sure you get in that bottom because you don't want nothing stuck to the bottom of this pot. All right, that's five minutes. I'm going to turn the fire off. Grab my jar. I'm actually going to grab two at a time. I just love these that one of our subscribers sent. I love these so much. Thank you again. I just love, love these. They work so well. I'm going to go ahead and ladle this into my jars. Now we're going to leave a quarter inch headspace, one fourth of an inch headspace on this, okay? Now, if you're new to canning, use your headspacing tool. But if you're kind of familiar with it, then you know it's that top ring on the jar. You can kind of go by that as well, okay? Okay, fill up this one. Now, I should get six pints out of this. All right. I'm going to grab my paper towel. And I'm just going to use some water. And I'm going to go around the rim of my jar. Making sure it's clean. And then I'm going to add a lid to each one of these and a band. 
And then I'm going to get these in the canner. The fire is on. And it is on high. bring this to a rolling boil okay now once this comes to a rolling boil I'm gonna start my timer for 20 minutes okay now no matter whether you're processing four ounce eight ounce or pint size jars you need to process these for 20 minutes okay all right so I'm gonna see y'all back here once I start my timer, I'm going to get it started when it starts boiling, but I'm going to see y'all back here once they are done processing. Timer's up. Turn off the fire. Wait for it to stop boiling. Remove my lid. Open it away from you so you don't get a face full of steam. Okay? Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let this sit right here for five minutes and then I'm going to take it out. All right, five minutes is up. I'm going to go ahead and get them out of the can. All right, y'all, that's it. I got eight pints, eight pints of persimmon jam out of the 11 pounds of persimmons, okay? So if you do half of this, then more than, well, actually, I added a persimmon or two. <laughs> so if you get five pounds of persimmons, just add one more. Because <laughs> that way, if you have some you might have a little left in the pot. That way you could take that, put it in a little jar or a little bowl, put it in the refrigerator, and you'll have some to eat right away. So I did add a couple of extras, which might explain for why I have more than six pints of jam here. So you all, that is going to do it. That is how easy it is to can persimmon jam. All right, y'all, so before we end the video, I am doing another batch of the persimmon jam and I wanted to show you a quick variation to this. Once you've added all of the ingredients, you can spice this up a bit if you like. So what I've already added was a tablespoon of ginger and I'm going to come back and add a half tablespoon of nutmeg, I'm sorry, of cinnamon. And then I'm going to add a half tablespoon of nutmeg. And I'm going to give it a stir. I added more ginger because I love the flavor of ginger. I just love ginger, period. So I have the fire on, on a low heat. But I just wanted to get this added and just show it to you real quick. And stir it in really, really well. 
Now, once I've stirred it in real good, what I'm going to do, get that clump out. I'm going to give it a taste. That is fantastic. Remember, that was for a double batch, okay? But just make sure you season it to your taste. All right, so this is the spiced version of the jam. And it has been cooking now for over five minutes because I forgot to set my timer. But that's okay, it doesn't hurt it. I'm going to let this sit here and rest for about three minutes or so. Just let it sit here and rest and then I'll be ready to start jarring this up. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show you here is the difference. This is the spiced version. See how dark it is? This is the regular. Oops. Spiced regular. So if you decide to go with the spiced version of this jam, this is what your product should look like. If not, just plain persimmon jam, which is very good. This is what your product will look like, okay? My personal favorite is the spiced because it just tastes so good. All right, that's it for today, you all. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single video that we upload to our channel. Thank you so much for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you, and I'm going to see you in the next video. Voila! Well,